We welcome in our co-host, New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap. Good morning. Howdy. How are you this morning? Uh, it strikes me that I'm kind of hungry. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you, got, you got a long two hours ahead of you. Buddy. <laughs> you got no answer for that, do you? <laughs> Not a single answer for that one, do you? Yeah. Also from the Berkeley County Health Department, he's a short timer. Bill Kearns. Good morning, Billy. Good morning. I did see there was uh, um, some snacks still in the green room there as you come into the studio. So Were there? Maybe you need to get out and get something during oh. break. Those are so, from last week. Oh, well, <laughs> I was wondering why they were green. Yeah, I didn't know right. if they came in that way or not. Yeah, the, the hair that's growing on them, that's not part of the snack. I'll that's, give you a little natural penicillin yeah. going on there. Oh, that's a good way to look at things. Yeah. 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 When, when is your retirement day, William? December 31st. Oh, you're coming close. And that's a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> so for you, December 30, I guess as well. Our guest in this segment is the nurse director for the Berkeley County Health Department, Tanya Manley. Tanya, good morning. Welcome back. Good morning. How are things? Things are good. Busy. Busy? Yes. Yeah. So uh, we are about to get a, the school break will come up pretty soon, uh, but uh, school immunizations, obviously something that you take care of before the school year starts. By the, by the time you get to this point of the year, have, have all those shots been taken care of or are there still kids that need to catch up? There are still kids. Uh, yesterday, we actually had a mother walk in, and there are still people who are getting their required immunizations as of this date. What is required to attend the public school in Berkeley County? Uh, to start school, um, there are basically seven vaccines that are required um, for somebody to enter into the school year um, for the first time enrollment. And then there are vaccines scheduled every couple of years. Then when they become, get to the age where they're 12 years old, there are two vaccines required. Then the senior year of high school, there is only one vaccine required. Do you know those off the top of your head, what's required at each age group you were just discussing? Yes, um, to start school, there are four, um, four doses of the Tdap are required, with one dose being after the fourth birthday. For uh, polio, there are three doses, and one dose has to be after the fourth birthday. Two doses of the measles, mumps, and rubella, with one dose after the first birthday. Two doses of varicella, with one dose after the first birthday birthday and then for hep hepatitis B three doses are re three dose series is required and the last dose has to be after the sixth birthday when going into uh, the seventh grade we there is required uh, Tdap and the MCV4 which is a meningococcal vaccine and then the second uh, senior year of high school you get the second dose in the series for the mcv4 are there other vaccinations that are recommended but not required yes um the uh hepatitis a is not required um meningococcal b is a lot of times required for people going into the military or going to college um, that may be on the enrollment form for going to college. And then, of course, uh, there's a lot of talk about the HPV, which prevents um, about nine different types of cancers, and that is also an elective vaccine. Bill, are there some misunderstandings regarding required vaccinations versus these which are recommended but not required? I, I think there is, and a lot of times um, um, people hear about the amount of vaccines that they're getting <clears throat> and the, the diseases that they are, um, they're combating and, and is a, a large number. Um, but the, the vaccines, people think, well, you have all of these that we're pumping into people's arms. Well, some of them are not required to get into school. I think, and I think that's what we need to look at. Those are the ones that are the most dangerous, and those are for the diseases that we've eradicated for the most part um, that we're vaccinating for. Um, the other ones are great, but it depends on a field that you're going into. So if you're going in the military, 
you're going to get certain vaccines. But then when you get to boot camp, you're going to get a lot more vaccines. You know that. And it's, I know that. And they're going to come by way of air gun. And you're not going to have a choice of whether you're going to get them or not. But you make that choice as a career. So if you're going into a medical field, there's certain vaccines that you're going to have to get. Um, but the basic vaccines, uh, while we have increased the numbers of those over the years, uh, the largest number of those vaccines have been in existence forever. It's the same ones that I got when I was a child, same ones that you and John got as a child. I'm older than you. You are. Yeah. And John's older <laughs> what, than I am. What is Tdap? Tetanus. Okay. Diphtheria. Pertussis. And okay. pertussis. Yeah, and, and is that the same tetanus shot you get a booster for when you get older? Every 10 years. Right. Yes. And when they get it at 12, then you don't need it for 10 years after that. Ten years. So if you yes. go, if you go get your annual exam, your doctor should have a record of that if you're an adult. Or if you've received it at the health department, we have we have um, vaccination cards. That while we have to research them, they're on paper and in storage. Mm -hmm. Go back into 40s, 50s, um, and then you know, um, and then we have a, a statewide database that we right. can put in. So depending on which provider you go to, um, as long as they're in West Virginia, they're part of that database. So if you go to your uh, physician and they vaccinate you, then you come later on to the health department. We can actually access that. Do you still do COVID vaccines? Yes, we still offer them. Um, they are currently, uh, you have to call the health department and provide your insurance information. We have to get it uh, pre-authorized, but we do offer the Moderna vaccine. The governor recently did a little dance around the COVID vaccines. I'm sure you saw that uh, by now when asked about it because he was questioned about whether or not he would support all of President-elect Trump's nominees, one of whom is Robert Kennedy as the Health and Human Services uh, Director, and he has uh, his questions about vaccines. So it's kind of filtered on down. And the governor, which uh, I, I believe during the pandemic was a big proponent of the vaccines, recently questioned the effectiveness and even the ne uh, necessity of the COVID vaccine mm -hmm. bill. Any thoughts on what he said? I was actually kind of shocked um, because, yes, the governor was um, – uh, very supportive of public health and getting vaccines into people, um, trying to keep them safe. Uh, but I was kind of shocked um, when basically went on 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 record for saying, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna support whatever the incoming president has to say. And um, that and and I, while I would support a lot of it as well, I still also am going to have my own thoughts mm -hmm. on issues. Um, so little, little surprised that that statement was made, but All right. we'll see. And it, it, we'll kind of get into it here uh, in a moment here. I want to let John ask some questions first. Go right ahead, John. Well, <clears throat> no, missing from this list, unless it's buried in, in the initials, the smallpox that I, I think we all have the scar on our arm from smallpox. Vaccine. Or a couple. Is, is that, that's not part of vaccines anymore? No, we still give that one. Okay. Smallpox. Not, no, we don't give polio. Polio. We okay. give the polio, and the polio is required, but the actual smallpox vaccine, no. Okay. And the polio is that one that that is required several times? The um, polio is three doses. So I had. It's been a long time. But you there, had it on a sugar cube. There was a sugar cube, and then there was another one. I think. That, or maybe it was just the sugar. The bottom line is this. I know, it was a long time ago. So mm -hmm. for those of us of a certain age, I go and they say my, my vaccine record is complete. Is it really if I haven't had a polio vaccine in, oh, I don't know, 60 years? <laughs> it should be. Um, we do have some people who have to have titers done, but they are for um, a hepatitis vaccine people that maybe work in healthcare, and they will do titers to see if you need a, a booster, but polio is not one of them. Yeah, you know, very similar, I think, to the hepatitis vaccines. You have a series, and it's supposed to be good um, for the rest of your life, but some, and similar to rabies, um, pre-exposure vaccines, um, but it, it can wean off after a while, so that's where the titers come in hand, 
come in play to see if you still have that immunity to it if you're still um, converted over um, but yeah the, the 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 smallpox um, I know I've had it three times in my life once as a child once in the military and then once about I'd say about 20 years ago we had a, a scare um, in the US and we um, a lot of public health people were being revaccinated for that um, and it's not a pleasant vaccine to receive. It's by way of a bifurcated needle and lots of them at one time you know, over a minute or so. But um, it's um, it's one of the vaccines that we use. I mean, smallpox is still alive in some of the third, third world countries, but in the U.S. it's been uh, eradicated. So. so we don't vaccinate for that any longer, mm -hmm. correct? All right. Uh, is, you mentioned you still do the polio vaccine, though. Is polio not been er eradicated in America? There hasn't been any cases over the last, um, I'm thinking it's, it's been like 20 years. Um, there was an outbreak of measles in 2022 in New York, one case. Um, and then I think actually, um, didn't West Virginia have an exposure? I believe so. Yes, in Morgantown. Um, but we have not seen any polio. So why do we, if we eliminated the smallpox because it was eradicated, why haven't we eliminated the polio vaccine? Good question for the CDC. That's who makes the decision. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's not the local health. It's department. not the local health departments. It's actually not the, you know, the state of West Virginia um, makes the decisions to follow um, the federal guidelines for recommended vaccines, mm -hmm. and we have a very strong. Um, vaccination policy in West Virginia and a lot of the other states have looked at ours as models um, but they just um, there's a it, people are very critical over the vaccines but what our job is that at your local health department is try to protect mm -hmm. um, not only children but adults um, we have used to be as you mentioned a while ago about getting um, tetanus vaccine you skip, every 10 years or if you had an injury you'd get that updated um, I forget how many years ago they added pertussis in there because the whooping cough was mm -hmm. on the rise mm -hmm. so you get that updated tetanus you would get it with Tdap or um, to have that pertussis in there, then when you come back again to get uh, to get that updated, you would just get the tetanus and diphtheria instead of the pertussis part of that. Well, let me ask you this: I was I went through this process just recently, um, and you know I'm relatively new to the area. When you move, you get new doctors, and you know it's, I don't remember what I have and had not had, but and tetanus was one of the ones that came up, and they they said, "Have you had it? When was your last tetanus shot?" I don't know. You know, I had. Do they give you a tetanus shot when you get surgery? I don't. I don't know that either. So, is it better to default to to another tetanus shot if, in fact, you had one four years ago and you didn't know it, or is it better to let it run out? Can you overdose on a tetanus vaccine? No. I actually had a discussion with our medical director a couple of weeks ago. Um, people who end up with an animal bite. Um, somebody who is an animal control officer um, and experiences a dog bite, uh, he says it doesn't hurt to get it annually. And if, say, a record is not found um, where the vaccine was given exactly, he said it would not hurt to go ahead and give another Tdap. So, you know, usually we go by 10 years. And I would think depending on the type of bite or injury, um, if you're close to say eight eight years in, they may recommend that you go ahead and get a tetanus shot if you have that type of injury. And the one last one specifically I want to talk about that there was a pretty hard sell put on for the RSV vaccine. A lot of commercials on TV for that. So let's talk that about that. That brings a lot of our um, elderly population in. It's advertised. And they see all this stuff on TV and they call and they want um, the immunization. And it's recommended that... That's a pulmonary thing. Yes, right? it is. And if you have comorbidities such as maybe heart disease, um, pulmonary issues, you're immunocompromised, then a physician writing a prescription. But what we see is a lot of times people just call and they want to get it. We do not carry it. Um, 
but I think talking with the physician and what does your physician recommend and you two having that discussion, just not seeing it on a commercial and say, oh, I need that and go and get it. It should be a conversation that you have with your primary care physician. And I think that's a good point that you just made, Tanya. Um, you know, we trust we trust our physicians, we trust our medical doctors that we go to um, for all of our other ailments that we have, whether you get the flu or COVID, you're calling your doctor, seeking advice on what should I do, what should I do? I think you leave the decision making to the medical professionals that have a degree. The problem that we have right now and has been for most of my public health career is we have this, the vaccines have become part of a, a political um, a political stance um, of, of our elected officials. Um, now, some of our elected officials are physicians down in Charleston. Um, I'll, I'll give you that. Um, uh, so, if they're you know practicing medical physicians, it's up to date on vaccines. Then yes, they would. Ha- have the knowledge to be able to recommend or not recommend vaccines and making them mandatory. But talk with your physician when at all, whenever you have questions about vaccines, should I get them? Do I have, uh, do I have adverse reactions to them? Talk to your physician, talk to your local health departments. They're the subject matter experts, not the politicians. My oldest son had an adverse reaction to one of the vaccines where you have to get him two different parts, right? So the first one, he had an adverse reaction. So they told him he shouldn't get the second one. I think that was the measles, mumps, or does that go in two, two halves? Yes. Okay. So uh, is he vulnerable to an outbreak of measles, mumps, or rubella as a person who only got one of the vaccines instead of both of them? It would put him at risk because he doesn't have the recommended two-dose series. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely it would put him at risk, and he would you know, want to be careful Um especially if he's around any children um, where the parents have not kept the vaccines up to date, um, it would be something that he would need to consider. So if you've had the vaccine, can you still be a carrier and give it to somebody who's unvaccinated? You can, you cannot give it to anybody. No. If you had the vaccine. Right. I see. Okay. So at the federal level, the next director of health and human services may be Robert Kennedy has to get through the hearing process first. And while he recently said, I'm not anti-vax, he certainly has been critical of vaccinations, uh, mandatory vaccinations, at least in the past. Uh, You're a health professional. Bill, you run the health department. I presume that you would not want to see mandatory vaccinations go away. Or or do you have a different opinion of that, Tanya? I definitely... um You know, I I do believe that people have a right to decide about vaccines, but I also do believe that there are the basic ones required for school entry. And you have to think about that child being in the community and the risk that it puts um, the other children in the classroom, the risk that it puts the teachers at, than the student going out into the community and doing things. Um, I think also children that are being raised by grandparents. Um, Grandparents may be immunocompromised, have different comorbidities. It puts them at risk. So there needs to be a certain guideline, a certain... um, What's the word I'm looking for? There has to be basic immunizations that need to be required so that we protect. And if you go back to the 1950s, 1960s, before some of these vaccines were developed, you will find that we had these communicable diseases, these um, diseases that caused a lot of problems and with developing the vaccines the diseases decreased dramatically over the years to the point that you don't see it anymore and that should be a good indication of why we should recommend the ones we do Bill? and, and I, I just I, I have not much i could add to that because tanya's right on the mark 
But I think as the state, you know, state of West Virginia, we're not really known for doing, being number one at a lot of things. But vaccinations and protecting our children, we are known for. And um, I think we need to build upon that. And again, it's it's it, you need to trust your physicians um, um, and seek advice from them, or call your health department um, because you're not just protecting your child. You're, as Tanya said, you're protecting parents, grandparents. Um, I know COVID gave us a black eye on the vaccinations. Um, many people made it a requirement of their jobs to be vaccinated. Um, we tried the best we could to protect the the most people that was. At, out there so i know continually year after year we have more people going to our legislators and 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 talking bad about vaccines and trying to get them eliminated um and at some point i'm fearful that that will happen and we're going to continue to fight the fight because it's well worth it wall street journal had an article just a couple of days ago um i brought it up here how science lost america's trust and surrendered health policy to skeptics and the the gist of the article <clears throat> is that once COVID became politicized and the orders were given that you must do what we know we all had to do, and then any argument, any scientific argument against policy was shut down and and discussion was 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 silenced, which is the opposite of the scientific method, right? And and we all know what happened. We're not going to re-adjudicate the, the COVID years. But the point of the article is that public health um, policymakers have a long way to go to re-earn the trust of, of Americans, particularly the Americans who were angered by being, by being silenced, which is not, I'm not talking about you guys in, in particular, but I think it is a real challenge for public health policymakers to understand how angered people are. And I, th I think the, the pendulum swing is for those who were fired for not ha having, for not wanting to take the the, um, the COVID vaccine. Let's do away with all vaccines. Well, obviously that's going a little bit too far, a lot too far in, in one way, in my opinion. So it's it will settle out, but I think it's going to take a long time. I know that there were comments made. Some people felt, um, you know, like you said, the mandation of taking the COVID vaccine, but. Yes, some people took the vaccine and they still got COVID, but if you didn't have to go to the hospital or if you were hospitalized, then you didn't die from COVID. You were lucky that you had the vaccine. And uh, during COVID, I worked in a nursing home and uh, it is something I will never forget. Um, and I just know that uh, giving the COVID vaccine. And we went 19 months without having anybody with COVID, no employees, no patients with COVID. We had a really good success rate. And then once that first person got COVID, it was just like a domino effect. And uh, it was very traumatic. And uh, Tanya, you know, I wanna thank you for coming in this morning. Appreciate all your mm -hmm. knowledge and information on the subject today. Thank you kindly. You're welcome. Bill, you get to stay? Yes. Mandatory. I'm in the admiral seat. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Sergeant to admiral. <laughs> <laughs>